Hi everybody, this is Alex Shevlev here on Forager's weekly video and today with me I've got Gaston who works with me as Senior Analyst on the Australian Shares Fund. Hi Gaston. Hey Shev, how are you? Good, thank you. So today we're going to be talking about the most recently completed reporting season and uh, it just recently wrapped up. We've got four highlights to share today and I'll let you kick off Gaston. Thank you. Um, I think the first one, one of my favorites is uh, Phineas. Uh, Phineas is uh, a provider of software uh, systems to the life insurance industry. Uh, they gave us a very nice uh, FY21 update. Uh, well, it was a result. Uh, so it was FY21 numbers were as expected, but the highlight was they upgraded the view for revenue growth in FY22 next year by 10 percentage points, that's quite a lot. So they're, they're saying they're going to grow the subscription side by 30%, um, which is quite uh, pleasing. And they're going to do that uh, mostly with existing, with the contracts and relationships that they have with existing clients. You know, and that was, that was an interesting part of a result, right, Gaston? Because there had been some questions around, well, we can't see them announcing any new contract wins. So how are we actually going to grow revenue here? But they confirmed that they can actually do that through their existing client set. That, that's right. They, they used to, if you look at the share price, it did nothing for like nine months. There was a lot of despair from people just saying, oh, why, why are they not announcing any new contracts? What's happening here is revenue momentum stalling and, and so on. And, and basically, this result uh, proved that you can grow 30% quite, quite substantially from one year to the next, basically with your existing uh, customer base. So to the extent that you sign uh, new, new logos or new companies, that, that is incremental to the growth opportunity that you already have at hand. Uh, so that was uh, quite pleasing. Um, and also, if you look at where Phineas is trading in terms of valuation, it's trading at a fraction of what their peers in, in the US trade at. Uh, the, by peers, I'm talking about Duck Creek uh, and Guidewire. They, those guys, they trade at like uh, two to four times the EV revenue multiple of Phineas. So uh, quite exciting. Uh, and last but not least, they, there were some question marks uh, because they're burning cash. It's an early stage company. They're growing quite fast. There was a question marks about the, the balance sheet, but they, those questions have now just been put to rest because the company raised $70 million uh, practically overnight, uh, very well subscribed. And uh, with a- interesting, um, interesting in that one, Gaston, that the actual, that the main shareholder here, it looked like he was selling down, but actually he was, he was actually buying more shares. Correct. He's buying uh, shares from his uh, co-founder, like a guy who owned, like uh, I think he he owned three or four percent of the company. He's buying him out essentially. So the CEO is, if anything, is slightly increasing his stake in the company. So it's always a good sign. And, he, and the CEO owns uh, fifty-four or fifty-five percent of the company. So it's a it's a pretty good alignment of interest. So maybe uh, over to you. What do you think are some of the highlights? So I might start with Motorcycle Holdings. It's one we've talked about uh, a little bit in, uh, in the quarterly report. Uh, the Motorcycle Holdings is a, a retailer of motorcycles. It's a wholesaler of accessories, and it's also got some retail outlets for motorcycles and accessories. So it's really across the, the motorcycle ecosystem. It's been a good, good place to be the last 12 months to 18 months. Really, COVID was an initial hit, but then very quickly, money started being diverted away from overseas holidays towards motorcycles. And a lot of the government uh, stimulus was helpful for them as well in terms of driving demand for the motorcycles. So the last, uh, the last year's result, which we, which we uh, got about a week ago from the company was stellar. And it was at the top end, even of an upgraded range that they had actually continually upgraded throughout the year. Importantly, I think they talked about the sustainability of the demand conditions that they see outside of the shorter term impact of lockdowns that they currently are experiencing. And they also talked importantly about the margins uh, being quite strong over that period, again, once lockdown finishes. Uh, two questions for you on, on that one. Uh, first, is the revenue going back uh, at some point in the near term as we all start like traveling and, and you know maybe we buy less cars and houses or sofas and the other one is about the sustainability of those uh, strong margins that you mentioned i think both of those are fair points guessed on you've have had a really extraordinary environment and you probably get a slight reduction in revenue and probably a larger reduction in margin going forward 
And that is what the expectation is for a lot of sell side analysts who cover the stock. However, there are some offsetting factors there. They will have contribution from further acquisitions. It's been a business that's acquired dealerships over time, and they'll continue to do that. And they've got an insurance subsidiary that is going from a loss-making position to a profitable one. In any case, the volumes that we saw were not dramatically different to the ones that we would have seen two or three years ago. So we think that they will stabilize at a lower level than currently, but then from that level can actually continue to grow. Let's turn it around a little bit and talk about Downer, Gaston, another highlight. Yes, another highlight was uh, Downer. They reported that result, which was uh, in line uh, with expectation, but that's exactly what the stock needed. Uh, uh, PD without any negative surprises now that they have uh, cleaned the business uh, and simplified the business and it, you know and they got rid of the mining and laundry uh, divisions which were more uh, capital intensive and, and volatile. Uh, the business showed good margin improvement across the three core uh, divisions, good cash generation um, and lower levels of debt and as a result of that the stock is up now 20 percent. Um, that's, a good, that's a good place to maybe just pause and talk about those margins. They were up in that year, but there's been a little bit of concern around a whole heap of industries around uh, labor cost inflation. Can you just talk about a bit about how they're exposed to that? Well, they employ a lot of people across Australia um, and across the three divisions, uh, telcos, utilities and transport. So they're, of course, they're exposed to wage inflation, but they're no more exposed than any other company in, in Australia. So I don't think it's a big issue for them. Uh, there was a slide in the presentation addressing that point, and uh, they make it very clear that uh, though most of their contracts have clauses to recover any uh, wage increases from their customers, be it in three months, six months or 12 months, but you do have protections uh, from that point of view. So I don't think it's a big issue for, for them. Um, and look, after reporting a, an inline result, uh, uh, the, the stock got rewarded with uh, a higher multiple, the stock now 20%, but even after that, it's still trading uh, relatively cheap, 16 times uh, PE. FY22 um, compared to the, the market trading in the low 20s uh, for, for a similar type of uh, EPS growth. So uh, a good result. Maybe uh, back to you, Sheb, uh, any other highlights from the season so far? Well, there's another one to highlight and it was a pretty big contributor for us in August. ReadyTech is the business. It's a provider of enterprise software uh, across education and uh, payroll software. It's a business that has had a bit of a quiet start to listed life. It hasn't been on the radar of many investors. And I think this result, which was pretty much in line with what was expected, uh, really helped to cement the fact that they are actually doing what they said they would do, growing revenue organically in the mid-teen range, which is uh, a very healthy growth rate, and complementing that with acquisitions. And one of those acquisitions actually looks to be performing a little bit better than they had expected uh, earlier as well. Worth pointing out that unlike a lot of uh, other reasonably quickly growing tech businesses, this one actually makes money. And uh, there's, a, there's a margin on that revenue of about 28% at the EBIT line. And that might not grow too dramatically, but it's still a good starting point. How much do you pay for um, that, uh, that growth and how long lasting is the is growth? So the company has put out some really interesting, uh, not guidance per se, but uh, statements around where they would like to be in Aspiration. five years time. Aspirations, I think that's right. And uh, that looks to compound their revenue organically at a rate of about 15%, which is what they have been doing the last couple of years. So it's not a dramatic increase or decrease, but it's good that they've confirmed that they feel they can do that over a longer time period. And you pay a high teens multiple for it. Now, it was low when we were buying the stock uh, six months ago, but that number is still a fair way below, for example, a technology one. Now, this business has a long way to run before it's anywhere near the size, liquidity, and diversity of a technology one, but it is, some, it is showing some similar characteristics, and it is a 10, 15, 20 PE point difference to that stock. Excellent, thank you. All right, so that's uh, that's the reporting season wrap up with the Forager Australian Shares Fund team. We'll see you again next time.